Good morning, or let's say good afternoon, Jose. How are you? Good evening. It is now uh, 6.40 <laughs> here in Japan, actually. I'm very well, thank you. And I'm very happy to be with you again, Josua. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. And Jose, I enjoy talking to you with the Ikigai podcast. And yeah. I'll be talking to you like forever. Oh. It's like <laughs> what we do in podcasting. You're such an amazing person. And oh, uh, so glad to have you today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, the honor was mine to do the Ikigai podcast. I was surprised that you wanted to honor me again for the Kaizen podcast. Uh, and uh, And I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thanks. So uh, I'm just going to start with usual questions. You know, how is the weather there in Japan? Uh, I don't know if we're approaching Tunisian summer temperatures, but uh, man, was it hot. This was um, the hottest summer on record in Japan. So, I heard uh, mm. And uh, so it's uh, starting to cool down a little bit, uh, but uh, it's unusual for the temperatures to be this high all the way into late September, usually they're a good five degrees lower than this. Yes, I guess I guess it's because of global warming and um you know the the current circumstances and all the the kind of the unrest in weather, you know, we can have this like visible, for example, in Libya they did they did have the hurricanes. So yeah. um and um I hope that everyone will be safe. Yes. And uh, like yeah the temperature is unusual and um, i hope it will cool down soon so we yes can have yes well a nice autumn. eventually it will uh it's just that it's kind of concerning it but on a positive note it makes it so much easier to teach the sdgs i don't have to deal with uh, climate change denial so much anymore yes exactly and it fits well into the sdgs and actually i i teach a lot of i implement a lot of the sdgs into my teaching practice and I'm the uh, the founder of the SIG Special Interest Group of the Partnerships for Sustainable Education with Tefal Kuwait. Wow. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I organize meetings with global professionals, whoever wants to talk about uh, his part and from his part of the world about the SDGs is welcome. And uh, my next webinar will be uh, devoted to a partnership with another interest group. Let's say, for example, uh, the last time it was with uh, with Harry Potter, Harry Waters. It was with partnerships. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but Harry. That's okay. <laughs> kind of. I'm, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure he'll be complimented. You know, I mean, he'll be he'll be flattered for the for the. Uh, I know. Comparison. So uh, Harry, he was amazing. So oh my goodness, uh, I, because my students like they have suggested reading Harry Potter, you know, and, and it's popped up into my head. So my last guest was Harry Waters. And we had the privilege of uh, having him as a speaker, talking about uh, change makers and um, everything related to the SDGs and uh, diversity and, and inclusion into and equity, sorry, into uh, inclusion into the uh, educational system and uh, all around the world. So we started to talk about change makers globally and uh, historically speaking until we reached, let's say, uh, modern times. So when it comes to the SDGs, uh, Jose, how hmm. far do you apply this into your teaching practice, or you don't you don't teach that at all? You just um, if I'm requested to, uh, for example, I had to teach a couple of classes the last couple of years for uh, Shimane University. That Shimane is one of the prefectures of Japan towards the west coast, and um, it's a national university, and they're very big on the SDGs. And it was a request from the university to try to make some kind of connection, uh, at least every other class or maybe every class with some with one of the SDG goals. And if that's the case, I, I do my best. I mean, it's a request, request from the university. But one thing that um, when the SDGs first came around, uh, maybe around, what was it around 2015, 2016? And they started really getting right. everyone some um, front windshield. Um, I first thought, well, where did these all suddenly come from? Why is the world suddenly talking about this? Uh, and why is it suddenly um, part of our curriculum? To the mm -hmm. point where there didn't seem to be a lot of critical thought about the whole concept to begin with. Now, I'm all for providing, you know, clean water, equal education to women, uh, and all of the other things that the SEG stand for. But the whole idea of suddenly, without critical thought, 
to the idea of like, let's do this because all the governments in the world um, want to do it and not applying critical thinking to it. One of the ways that I sort of uh, look at the SCGs is to look at the idea of where did these ideas come from and should we take it just on face value from our governments and our world institutions that this is something that we want. Because you could look at it from a critical viewpoint and say, is this something that um, uh, maintains <laughs> capitalist imbalances or are any parts of the SDGs actually in a way uh, exacerbating problems that exist and are being uh, confronted by other SDGs? They just basically look at the SDGs in a way, not just in and of themselves, but to use them actually for critical thinking. Actually, I have a personal perspective to all of this. So I started, um, so I will tell you a little bit how it all started. So first, I heard about what we call the MDGs. So there were before the SDGs, something called Millennium Goals. There were just eight. It's like poverty, protecting women in childhood. So they're, they're there to be, um, the, let's say the resource exists online and uh, it's only eight goals. But then, as you said, the the kind of bursting, uh, kind of really rapidly of that SDGs concept, it's, we can say that it's sometimes it can be politically uh, kind of justified because sometimes, you know, the governments, they do their best, they implement policies, but if citizens, they don't collaborate on that point, they're not aware that they should preserve, for example, if you don't need electricity in this room and you get out of the room, why don't you switch it off? So there are certain things like raising consciousness and um, when it comes to social uh, social life, when it comes to everyday life. So they started, let's say, the best way to change minds and to make change makers is through education. Mm. So we all know this. And especially if it's done at, at a young age. So they started implementing the SDGs, let's say, for even for KG students, you know, the, the little ones. It's like uh, they kind of recreate things from recyclable materials so that to make them aware that this can be used for a particular reason. And you don't have every time to use something new so that, for example, to create a, a prototype to something. I don't know if it's a bag. So I had students creating, for example, bags from everything they can find from other clothes, you know, uh, secondhand clothes. So the thing is that the SDGs, it's like um, done in partnership, but in, in, in other terms, in other sense, it's like sometimes the governments just get tired from saying things, from trying to make people aware of that. And the help of other, like the help of society, we, we, or we are the people actually, it's like, it's like should be done from our part as well. So if it's not implemented from our part, it will be just black on white. It will be just something written on a piece of paper, you know? Right. So, but apart from this, it's like, uh, there are other things, Jose. There are other things, it's like, um, I might not reveal like everything that uh, maybe comes to my mind when it comes to the SDGs, but sometimes when it's coming by 2030, it's worse, you know, as if we're getting people ready to what is going to happen by then. We might not have internet by then. We might not have, I don't know, digital tools by then. We might not have electricity by 2030. So it's better to get people ready from now to that concept that is going to happen, you know, from seven years from now. It's like at that time, the world would be different. Yes. So it's like a kind of uh, I don't want to, I don't know how to call this. It's like getting people ready in a way. It's just like a simulation to whatever is going to happen afterwards. Mm. And, uh, you know, the other parts, it's like to, it's, I, I leave it to the legislation, to governments, but it's like um, paving the way kind of to uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to call it a catastrophe. I don't want to call it like a apocalypse. No, I don't see it in that sense, but I see it like something important is going to happen by then. Mm -hmm. You know, the digital world that we're now we're going implement and we're talking about the digital classroom. We're talking about everything, which is, you know, techie. And who says and who knows what is going to happen in seven years from now? We'll be having generations dependent to digital tools. Uh, generations maybe who can't operate up like apart from the settings they got used to the digital classroom 
is for us, it's obvious. Uh, in my age, I used to like the Google in my age was like kind of checking the, the you know, the, the, the old. Um, the index uh, cards of the library. Cards. Yeah, that, yeah, that's pre prehistoric Googling, I call it. <laughs> so I, I know how to deal with that. I'm 39, so I know how to do that. But for those who are, who are 19, 13, 14 and 19 up to 18, 19, I'm not sure they, they can use that. <clears throat> so I think it's good to 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 kind of train Generation Z to do things with or without internet. Okay. Do you think they can live without TikTok? <laughs> I wish they would. Uh, I wish there were a uh, my okay. I I don't know if this is part of the Kaizen podcast or not, but um, <laughs> okay, I have a okay. a very strong opinion on social media, and I. And I do agree with a lot of commentators out there that I think on the overall, the world has been made worse by social media on the overall. There are people who know how to use it. And um, through social media, I met you. Uh, through social media, I've been able to, um, I think, affect uh, or may have some good effects on, on my community. But in general, um, especially, I got to say, TikTok and Instagram are on 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 the whole. Uh, Twitter, especially lately, have just become negative drags on uh, on uh, on the people that they affect. Facebook, uh, yeah, you know, uh, as much as I use it, um, it's it's a negative drag on society, especially considering how it's been used. It's manipulated to uh, to um to, for for negative uh, political. Uh, effects on the American elections and so on and so forth. Do I wish, do, do I think they can, they can live without it? Yeah, of course they can live without it. Do they want to not live with it? Uh, they don't want to, but that's, that's another discussion. I'm um, just like, um, um, you know, our generation, can we live without, you know, our personal automobiles? Certainly we can. Do we want to? Even I probably would have to hesitate and think, well, if I have to, but I don't want to. But the problem is how we as educators show uh, our students and the people around us, as you said, the alternatives, why the alternatives are better, or at least prepare yourself for a world where those alternatives must be met because there is no TikTok. Is there TikTok in Tunisia? Yes, we do have oh, TikTok. Okay. And I was... <laughs> I was not like um, an enthusiast person for TikTok until I've tried it myself in last February. And I started what we call the pronunciation challenge. It's like I I record myself pronouncing the longest words in the English language, like pneumono, ultra microscopic, silicovolcanoconiosis, uh, anti disestablishmentarianism, supercalifragilistic expialidocious. And I started, yeah, and I started posting this to social media and involving other people and students so that they post their videos as well. I like TikTok. I like the edited features actually, 